Sponsored by True Tech Tools. TrueTechTools.com. Well, good morning, YouTube. I'm here at the fire station, and what we're going to try to do today is figure out how to cut off the heat systems whenever the bay doors are open. Um, I guess at this station there is some kind of control already in place but it's not functioning properly then there's two other stations that once we get this one straightened out we'll uh, try to duplicate this system so that we can control the other stations the same somebody's pulling up so hopefully that somebody can let me in and I'll try to get video along the way so far what it looks like is that we've got some low voltage control coming in and go into this ice cube and it breaks across that set of contacts white wire and a white wire and uh, these blue wires look to be our 24 volt coil or whatever voltage coil it is right so that one wasn't too difficult all the infrastructure was in place to cycle the heaters off whenever one of the doors opens. There's four heaters, four Resner type heaters, and they all run off of one thermostat. So that makes it fairly simple. Pretty much just daisy chain through all of the units and um, cut it off when any of the doors open and the low voltage is in the garage door itself if you look up there near the 24 volt class circuit i am tapped into number two and number four which is common with number five and that circuit when the garage door opens is powered which energizes my coil on my relay right here and breaks my normally closed contacts. So we're headed over to station number two. See what's going on over there and I'll see if I can get any video on that one. Most of the older garage door openers have got normal 24 volt um, terminals. And so when the system opens the door when the garage door opens the one of the terminals or a couple of the different terminals receive power when the door stops but they don't have power any other time so the normally open normally closed or normally closed relay is fairly straightforward there there are a couple of newer model units that actually have 32 volt DC as all of their controls and all of the terminals in that device have 28 volts AC all the time so I can't use 24 volt controls there but the newer devices also have um, limit switches in them that are utilized as basically normally open normally closed relays that are engaged by a little lever and um, I talked to the tech support for commercial lift master garage door openers and um, he said that there was no way to do it that was more complicated than the limit switch so I've got to get a hold of a lift master dealer that will be able to give me several of those limits that I can install and just use them as dry contacts that will open when the door opens and close when the door closes but that's what we've got so far I will continue this video when I go back and um, 
take you guys along for the ride on all that. Um, so to be continued. Well, good morning, YouTube. <clears throat> it is Friday morning, and I'm headed back to the firehouse, one of the three firehouses, to continue the saga. As soon as I get over to the firehouse, I will uh, see if I can bring you along for a little bit of that joy that I'm getting into, and uh, we'll try to close up this video. Uh, we may end up having to wait on a couple of specialty parts for the garage doors, for some of the garage doors, but uh, stay tuned and we'll get back to controlling furnaces in a firehouse by uh, tapping into the garage doors. All right, in summary, this is a high voltage thermostat system and how I've got it wired is that when power from the thermostat energizes these two terminals here which are 120 volt that black wire with the yellow spade connector energizes the transformer the transformer runs through my little popper it goes up through normally closed contacts on each of the garage doors comes back and ties into the red and yellow wire connection here this blue wire is tied to common which energizes that coil which allows the or normally open and common terminal to be powered which starts the inducer motor once the inducer motor runs it goes through the pressure switch from that yellow wire through the pressure switch which runs all the way down to the other end of the tube heater to power the gas valve so I didn't do anything but add normally closed contacts to the thermostat signal and then uh, the pressure switch is still functioning as it used to Right, so I figured I'd give you a little bit of an update. I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off since I finished up the radiant tube heater. I'm headed over to a uh, LiftMaster garage door office to see if I can get a hold of a couple of the limit switches that are used in the machine that I can use as a dry contact. What I ran into was that I cannot find in stock anywhere a DC voltage normally closed relay. What I did find is from the carrier parts house a relay for their heat strip but since it's normally open I'm trying to wrap my head around a way that I could use that normally open in tandem with a normally closed 24 volt relay to be able to get my thermostat circuit to break when the garage door opens and I'll show you how it all comes together if it works out that way if it doesn't I'll show you what I come up with to rig it anyway I'll uh, check back in in a little bit so the limit switch that I got from the garage door company only has this small section here from that space over and it looks like I would need a standoff of some kind to get it to line up with that white wheel uh, so it looks like I'm gonna actually have to end up using my DC relay to get things to do what I want them to do stay tuned so I had overcomplicated it a little bit ago with a normally open contact here on the red wire that's tied to this relay or limit switch it will energize the coil on this DC voltage relay and close those contacts whenever this door stopper hits that position the door as soon as it moves will de-energize that terminal 
which will open that and shut off the heat. So it's pretty straightforward with the DC relay and the limit switch that is in place. So here's proof of concept. We've got a burner running. We're going to open the door. We're going to stop the door. And the burner goes out. When we close the door, it cuts back on again. I'm going to go open the one I just wired up. fire up again. Most of the firehouses are similar to this one. We've got one, two, three, four uh, garage door openers that uh, each one will kick off the heat if the door is partially open or not. Full open, partial open, whatever you, whatever's going on. So, We'll close this one, and the heat just kicked back on again. So that's what we got for now. I'll be back in a second. So we got all the garage doors straight, got everything controlled. Um, the first, one of the first firehouses had uh, six doors that all had at one time controls that worked. That one was pretty straightforward. I got two relays that had failed the coils were not uh, opening the contacts on the normally closed circuit anymore so I replaced those contact or relays and got all six doors working on that firehouse there were four resners that all ran off of one thermostat on the second firehouse, there was nothing there. There were four doors and the radiant tube heater. I ran the wire and got that one straightened out. And then on the last one, there were six doors and two heaters. One heater on a four-door bay and the other heater on a two-door bay. That um, I ran the two doors on one heater and then four doors on the other heater. At this point, we did not try to interconnect the two separated bays. They've got some doors between the bays, but um, figured that at this point, you know, we can see how that goes, and if they wanted to try to control both heaters when any door opens we could get into that later um, but see how this does for reducing their bills the radiant heater wasn't too bad it took a little bit of thinking because of the 120 volt uh, thermostat the high voltage thermostat but I got that one straightened out and everything else was pretty simple for the most part the biggest issue that we started to run into was um, the DC voltage controls but once I uh, found a relay on that everything was working like we intended it to 
Um, I used the DC voltage relays out of a carrier heat kit. It's the relay on the carrier heat kit that has the little adder block that converts 24 volts AC over to DC voltage. And so we were simply able to pull that little adder block off and use the DC coil to isolate. There's a message for you. So in the end, everything worked out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah.